The following program may contain strong language. All of the comments and opinions expressed do not reflect the views of anyone but those making said comments. If you decide to continue listening to this program, it is assumed that you are not easily offended and have a broad sense of humor. Now that all that's out of the way, enjoy! Okay, and uh, welcome to the show. Show number two. Number two. The sequel. With a bullet. Number two. Anyone else have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> we've, we've already run them out again. Oh, great. Three seconds in. Is that going to be our bit? We just we just really shut the show three seconds in? Yeah. Because we see who wants to stick around after we shit on it. Right. Just right completely off the crap on everything else <laughs> that we do. Because why not? Well... Thank you. Welcome back. For those of you who listen to show one, and uh, for those of you new people, hi, I'm Mike Went. I'm Billy Finnegan. Today I'm going to go by uh, Mustache Incorporated. Oh, all right. Moving up in the world. <laughs> Got those Romney dollars working for you. Absolutely. Getting a little more legitimate here. <laughs> and uh, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. We, we just, uh, I, I just had a, an accident outside of, of, the, uh, of the station here. Uh, there it seemed to be a lot of commotion. There about. was a lot of commotion. Just a car just jumped the median, and uh, and this old gentleman staggered out, uh, being the good Samaritan that I am, helped him, and it got you him. You didn't in. touch him, did you? No, of course not. Because that makes you liable. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I didn't want to do that. I, I'm looking out for my best interests. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, it was just uh, you know, at one one second you're just kind of sitting there watching the cars go by as as normally as everything does. And next thing you know, something just interrupts the matrix, and just big, big explosion, bigger than my hands clapping. And, uh, <laughs> Hopefully. And I'm going, what, what, what the hell just happened? What, what, what's going on here? What are you wrecking my day for? Sometimes commotions are good until they ask you to help. Right. If I can just be a spectator, like I can sit here and look out the window. Like most people in traffic. At all the blue lights. Exactly. If I can rubberneck from my, my seat, my comfortable <laughs> chair right here, that's fine. When you ask me to get up, now you're inconveniencing me and my world, and I hope that something <laughs> awful happens to well, you. Well, I guess I'm just going to do the uh, the Good Samaritan thing for us both then, Mike. You are the Good Samaritan. I came up here and asked you why he was in the building. <laughs> what is he doing in here? I don't know. He's still here. Shut Being up. nice to these people. Shut up. He can hear you. No, he can't. I know. If he can, these walls suck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, but not the first time. I was telling you that uh, yeah. on one of the uh, one of the late nights, sorry, uh, a group of uh, shit faced teens <laughs> run right up on the guardrail. It was snowy, right? And I would have given them the benefit of the doubt that it was snowy, and they were in their mom's minivan, and they rode that thing right up onto the guardrail well, and kept trying to drive. <laughs> well, we all like know it was that. a fucking uh, like it was a like one of those Bigfoot 4x4s. Four four we all know that mom's minivans are the pussy magnets Absolutely. of the generation today. But the second they all started pouring themselves out of the van, and then they're, the person who was following them pulls into our parking lot here, yeah. and everyone just <clears throat> like just starts drunkenly slamming on the windows like I'm a fucking animal in a zoo. Right, you're, you're the, the beacon of hope there. Yeah, so I just <laughs> completely ignored them. Thank God for soundproof. I can Absolutely, and bulletproof. Trying to bang on the windows. Do your worst. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, another night when the, the cops showed up and everybody kind of mm. scattered quickly. It is nice that we have the uh, the barracks right down the, barracks the street. right there. Makes it very quick, especially when I get scared of, you know, my own shadow and I have to dial 911. <laughs> Warning to all of you. <laughs> too, too many late night horror movies. There's a ghost. <laughs> get over here. Oh, you're the one that was giving me VHS uh, as a, as something to watch in the overnights. And I'm going, why am I even watching this? This is disturbingly <laughs> Awful. Because I need somebody else to relate to my tortures. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrifying. <laughs> it wasn't a bad movie, though. Well, every time you give me a, an, a suggestion now, I, I, I kind of looked it twice at it. Kinda, well, I have to look up a little information sure. first, you know? Uh, yeah, I, what was the the uh, the grooming movie that you... Yeah, the Manscaped oh, Mans movie. Oh, Man so Mansom. I had to, Mansom. Mansom. I had to look that up first just in case, like, something... Like, maybe maybe some guy's chest here starts strangling people <laughs> uh, out of nowhere, and I'm, I'm freaking out by no, myself. No, that was a very very safe for late-night viewing uh, right. Morgan Spurlock documentary. It was, very, it, was, it was good. I figured you'd appreciate it. Was it. it was nice. Well, you know... Being mustache ink over there. Uh, thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Um, so what's on the docket? What's well, 
I I uh I was at a wedding this weekend. Full blown, full weekend in the wedding, tuxedos. I saw and it's it's not official until you post it on Absolutely Facebook. Absolutely not official. Um So technically you were like, you know, I know the DJ is a big guy that says, I'm the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. So and so. Right. You got to be the first technological uh I was definitely one of the first. One of okay. I was definitely one of the first. Be, being introduced, I'm sure there was some people already getting already, up there. Yeah. They, they already have it saved. They're just waiting for the, the little click. Yeah. They're waiting for the, for the DJ to make it official in the room <laughs> so that they can make it official but to you, the world. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to beat the DJ at that? Or I mean, Sometimes, but it can all fall apart before the DJ says it. I've never known, even celebrity weddings, <laughs> that a DJ, before he could get those beautiful words out, a DJ, you know, a divorce would come through. I don't, I've never heard that. I'm sure it has. I, I'd like to I mean, find that out. I would like to, maybe, maybe I'll try that one day. <laughs> that'll be, that'll be your My gimmick. My girlfriend would hate that. <laughs> she just, she, I'd be headbutted into oblivion. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, full weekend and, uh, good time. A lot of, uh, a lot of good people, a lot of fun, a lot of drinking. Well, I mean, you and I went out to, um, a wedding was it la- last year? And yeah. We all had we all had a great time. Yeah. I mean, and it was fun to go out to a wedding where you 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 go with people you work with and you're still having a good time rather yep. than like, you know, hey, so about next week, um, I I don't think I can fill in. You see the glassiness of my eyes. That means I'm not going to remember what yes. you're telling me right now. Sorry, it's not going to. Or you know, and it, it wasn't like I you know you had to walk on. You know, eggshells with your boss there because your boss was just as cool as everyone else right. hanging out. Um, but yeah, we had a good time. So I, I can only imagine that 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 you and the missus had a had a pretty good time. Yes, there. we did. We had, a, we had a great time. Uh, it was really no no problems, no real issues, which is always good because yeah. nobody likes that. There's always, there's usually one guy, but there wasn't one of those guys this time around. Yeah, the crazy uncle. The, yeah, just the guy who's got to be the just, asshole yeah, in, the, in the group. I, the, as the asshole, the guy who just touches and feels your girlfriend a little too much. <sighs> oh, funny you should yeah, mention that. Well, <laughs> no, I was at a wedding earlier this year also where there was that guy, and that guy had to get dragged into the bathroom and, and taken and, care and, of a little dealt bit. dealt with, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, it was a good time. <laughs> Although your girlfriend, I think she could pretty much manage by herself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's usually not... not uh, not her. It's usually the it's probably the younger girls that kind of yeah. worry about that. Yeah. The impressionable ones <laughs> who think it's all fun and games. <laughs> oh, it's just right. having fun. Right, Not, until, stum- until someone screams statutory. Right. It's, it's all fun and games <laughs> until it gets real. Yeah. Until you see that serious look in his eyes where it's just like <laughs> all just or kinda, nothing. It's just kind of glazed over, and then next thing you know, a big a hunk of man meat is... Look, is... you don't know my name. <laughs> I don't care about your name. All bets are off. Oh, dear. Dear God. It's bathroom time. Oh. Double guns, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Handicap stall. <laughs> but there was not that guy at this wedding, Good. thankfully. Good. Thankfully. Um, but yeah, I, I just, uh, it's one of those things, like stuff like this, and uh, any real, I guess you'd call them like guys weekends away. Yeah. It really, that's what really kicks in and, and really makes me feel my age. Because it's it's not the the length of time you can party. Mm-hmm. It's the the shitty recovery time afterwards. It's just getting longer and longer and longer. Of course. And it's like now I got like I need to make rules for myself. Well, and you also got the icy hot on you, and you maybe oh, maybe you got like a, a so an much. entire tub of Motrin. Yep. Because you're a big vagina. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I I actually uh, before before hitting bed I, I insert a tampon, uh, just in case, <laughs> oh just in case, uh, into my ears. But you love all women. You know, I just I help. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's just especially and I feel weddings tend to bring out the worst in hangovers for me now because there's so much mixing of shit. Oh yeah, you, you never because it's like. You got champagne for the toast. Mm-hmm. You got wine with dinner. Mm-hmm. There's usually beer all over the place. Then oh, you yeah. get the hard alcohol that you drink. And and then they, for some reason, shut off the hard alcohol, so you go back to beer. You go back to beer, or um, or they do, uh, like, they'll, they'll mix it up and be like, you know, the the, the open bar will be select alcohol, right. and then, but it's not, you know, but then 
once you start having to pay for it, you might as well get the good shit because right. you're paying for of it. Of course. So you get that. So you're mixing that type of thing. You're mixing like you know this whiskey with that whiskey yeah. and then this with this. And then by the end of the night, you're you're you've got mouthwash in a in an old you, your tip stomach shoe. is just a curdling cesspool. <laughs> and of course, you're dancing, you're sweating. You don't you, you feel no pain. You've and then all of a sudden, you hit the LMFAO bed and you're just like for the last time. <laughs> you're just spinning, <laughs> spinning. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful experience. It's like you've been on the Gravitron for eight hours. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the, the first night, because, you know, I was in the wedding, so we had the rehearsal dinner the first night. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, along the same lines, you know, we had beer and wine and, yep. and, you know, I had my Jack and Cokes for the majority of the night. And then, uh, afterwards, we went back to the hotel and there was a, uh, a Chinese restaurant right, oh, like, right next door. Always the good, tradition of course well, what food. else are we gonna do we're all here it's we're fantastic. all at the hotel yeah you know let's go let's go let's 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 fuck with some chinese people <laughs> <And> why not <laughs> no but uh but of course you, i show up and everybody's you know the table's full of it was a, a yellowish orange drink and i'm like what, what are you drinking like, oh my ties are great here i'm oh. like oh. like oh saddle me up boss yeah because you're highly suggestible at that time absolutely i have you know it was great everybody's having my ties i'll get some my ties let's do some my ties <laughs> all right my ties. <laughs> just wedding calisthenics but yeah and um and i think the, the the problem was because my hangover was worse after the rehearsal dinner than it was after the actual wedding but i believe i drank more at the wedding and i think mm. it was i didn't puke after rehearsal dinner so, so probably... it all just stayed inside oh okay i see so you so i woke up and i just on. felt like shit but it was all still inside of me yeah so and of course you know my girl orders two ginormous breakfasts and she's like you gotta eat something and it's always this thing that you don't want to eat just and it, it was a full breakfast it was eggs bacon potatoes pancakes everything yeah, everything i don't want to eat when i'm hungover well no i mean i need to be really left alone <laughs> like i need to be <laughs> i'm very fragile room, in that state just listening to uh, the cure i i I'm, I, be, I become very very fragile in that state where uh i need to just you know sit preferably dark cool room yeah no talking I don't want to listen to anything. I just want, I want my water, my coffee, my Advil. I'm gonna sip each thing, and I'm gonna take my Advil. Then I'm gonna get in the shower when I'm good and goddamn ready. And then I'm, when I'm done, just leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> leave me alone. I'll, I'll let you know. Right. I'll let you know. Right. But no, it's gotta be. You gotta eat something. I'm like I can't. I can't do. It. And I'm sitting there. I'm sitting in front of it, and just the sm and I and I love. I love breakfast food. Absolutely love breakfast food. Mm -hmm. So this would all be wonderful for me. Had, had like three hours earlier, I had just purged. Right. But no, no, of course not. I, I'm because yeah. I'm strong like bull. I'll keep it in an iron gun. Or blah, blah, blah. But no, of course not. Why? But, why, why, but, why would I be smart about but it? But no longer are you iron gut. No, I can't. That, be. That's what we're getting to. Is that is that you? I'm old gut now. You're old gut. Yeah. You're old saggy gut. I'm old rock gut now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so of course, for. Uh, for the groomsmen's gifts, we all got flasks. Very nice. Of course. Monogram. Uh, fucking awesome flask. The, probably the best groomsman gift you can get. Absolutely. So. Because you take it to the next wedding. What do we do? You don't want to be at. Of course we all fill up our flasks. <laughs> so. We get, we're getting going. And this is a few hours after my, my, my childish behavior with the hangover. Of course. Um, we finally get to the church and I'm like, all right. Feeling good enough. Let's start it up. We got Jack in the flask. Let's do it. So we start to, and, and, you know, I was semi smart about it. Mm -hmm. The smart thing would be to not drink it. Right. Of course. But I was semi smart. I was just, just sipping Sips. a little yeah. bit. Sip, 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 sip. Feeling nice. Feeling nice. It actually did, it, it helped a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little hair and a dog helped a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, <laughs> Yeah, the wheels that, just the wheels are turning right now. Well, the flat, the Mike's flask head. was in play for a lot, and, and it was it was he's a, trying he's trying to get this this story back into it, but there's something fuzzy about it. it. There is it's, <laughs> well, there's a lot of fuzzy points to it, but um, the flask was in play a lot. The flask was uh, and all of ours were uh, a source of entertainment for for everybody, especially people you know onlookers, who after the ceremony, they were the the girls were all taking pictures, right. 
we were left outside the church. Yeah, Literally, what else are you going to do? The, 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 the four groomsmen are standing out there. We don't, literally, we ended up just being like, I need an adult. <laughs> I need an adult. Somebody <laughs> give me instructions. Tell me what to do. Well, now you've become the zoo animal. I really, I really had. And um, so we're standing outside the church, no idea what we're doing. The, the bride and groom took the, the bridesmaids off to take pictures. Right. And we're saying, like, what do we do? So you have four groomsmen <laughs> banging back their flasks in yeah. front of a whole busload of churchgoers. No, no longer is the sip needed. No, no, because we, we had sat through church, so we're good. We don't need to, you know, contain ourselves anymore. Right. Um, so we uh, fast forward a little bit. We get to the reception, and uh, they start talking about the, the, the entrance into the reception. And you know how the, the hip thing is to... Do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something. Make everybody tries to make a YouTube video of something or something that will get them. I get don't them, know what. Get them on the Ellen Show. Right, exactly. And uh, and I just I, I I hadn't I hadn't. They were all trying to do it. They, they kept saying, you know, let's do. They want to do touch. They're all football fans, so they all wanted to do touchdown poses. Great. And they're just throwing out names. Aside from Tebow, I had no idea. Anyone do the icky shuffle? No. It's the only one I know. See, that's, that's a bit too old school for, for the crowd. <laughs> see, it, let's, let me put it this way. If I know the reference, that means it's been around long enough for me to know it. Oh, yeah. The Icky Shuffle was the 80s. And, um, but like I said, aside from Tebow, I didn't recognize any of the names or let alone the poses. And my, my thing was I was just going to do the flare strut. I was going to come in, do the strut, woo, and <laughs> go about my business. Styling Nobody got profiling. it. No, 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 nobody was into it. The, especially the uh, the bridesmaid I was with, she was she was she's like I don't get it. I'm like I know you don't. I'm like what do you what would you like to do? Well, I mean yeah, what is she gonna do, Tebow? And uh, no, no, there's somebody already somebody, somebody snagged already that did. right I'm up. Surprised. I'm surprised. I mean, who who has a known touchdown dance these days? So anyway. we, we well we ended up doing Gronk. We ended up doing the Gronk spike. Me and her. Ah uh, yes. Which uh, was, was good they in theory. It, it's it's recognizable, especially in in this region of the country. Right. Uh, so the, plenty of Pats fans because you know they're they're big Patriots fans. The the bride and groom. But what did you have to spike? Oh, absolutely nothing. Well, then that she she, the she didn't spike the flowers, which I kind of thought would have been you know. Or at least bit, spike her shoes. Something. But what I ended up inadvertently spiking was the flask. Oh. Because when I did the Gronk spike, you know, it's it's a whole body oh, motion yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. It's it's a comp- basically my the inside <laughs> of my jacket exploded onto the dance floor. <laughs> phone, flask, I had an envelope, <laughs> everything's just all over the floor. Right, an envelope, and I, I, didn't know I had what a happened. skeleton key that was unlocking a treasure later on. <laughs> there, was, there was so much noise and music, I didn't even know what happened. I saw my phone go flying, I'm like, okay, that kind of figures. My f-. So I pick up my phone and I go to the end of the line, and uh, and I see everybody kind of staring at me. I'm like, what? And they're pointing down at their feet, and I look, and they're shuffling my flask over to me with their feet. I'm like, just pick the fucking thing up. Yeah. Why does it have to be an incognito thing? We've been swilling thing? from these things all day. Right. So, you know, I pick it up. and, and Why why do, why do they have to do it, like, as if mom's watching? Like, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, the porno mag, get, get, the flask, get, get it out of here. The, the flask, and he's been drinking from all day. Don't oh let anybody my, see it. Oh, that we've all seen him drink from. Oh, my God. <laughs> but um, Holy shit, is he even of age? <laughs> right. Um, but it was it was it was a good wedding. They um, the bride and groom had uh, the Patriots mascot running with them. Oh, good. So it was it was because you know, you know that guy needs another paycheck. Absolutely, and uh, it, was, it was it was nice. Uh, it was it's kind of like a, you know like I said I'm I'm a Bruins fan, so it'd be like having Renee Rancourt there to right. introduce us, which would be which would have been nice, pretty awesome. But uh, but that's their equivalent, and the, they seem to love it. Uh, cool. The groom didn't know he was showing up. So it was a oh, surprise so was a nice to him. Surprise. So he came, nice. so when he was there, it was like he saw. Like, ah, Congratulations, buddy! You, that's the one last thing, <laughs> cool thing you get all, you, way, congratulations. all year long. You get a teenager in a foam head. <laughs> oh, it's probably a teenage girl too. That's what they all are. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> that's creepy. Anyway, that's creepy. But anyways. But anyways. Um. But yeah. The the um. So that went on and on and on and. Uh, of course. There's always an after party to a wedding. Yeah. You have to have one. And whoever has the biggest hotel room seems to be the one that wants to host it. And so you had the biggest nope, hotel. Oh. Nope. 
Well, I, we might have. Well, it's the we might have, but I wasn't sharing that information. It's, it's the biggest hotel room, not not named the honeymoon suite. Right, exactly. Yeah. And uh, but it, you know, the best man had it, and uh, we were in his room, and those and those are always funny to me. The parties Be- themselves, or the, the hotel after rooms? parties to oh, yeah. the to the weddings, because it's literally, if you break it down, you're literally taking a group of severely drunken people mm-hmm. and giving them like two more hours to, to just funnel as much alcohol yeah. into their bodies as possible. It's basically like you haven't puked yet. Get yeah. it the fuck over with. <laughs> let's, let's get it moving here. But Seriously. You also, but you also have, uh, you know, it in your bridal party or whatever's going on. Right. You also have a bunch of single women in there who just witnessed a wedding. Yeah. So it's either, it's either the, uh, the, genetic uh cesspool going on the the hormonal cesspool going what are they on called? What, the pheromone pheromone that, that, that. cesspool or you have you know you're gonna have the one girl or something in there that's you know in the corner she's being consoled by some guy that won't ever sleep with her because you know she's not really gonna put off for that guy because you know he's friend zoned sure. whatever and she's upset because she's not gonna get married sure. her biological clock is ticking so those are always, I mean, unless unless you're with family, because right. then if it's a big family thing, that's like, oh, well, then you got crazy Uncle Jimmy, you know, looking looking at uh, at his nieces, you know, who just who just hit a growth spurt. <laughs> just, <laughs> one of those type of weird things. I haven't seen you in a few years, <laughs> Uncle Jimmy. I used to sit on your lap. Well, you can sit on my lap uh, now. How related are we? <laughs> <laughs> right, first, second, what? Can, can are we? we ha- I get the rule book out. (laughs) In what state? Somebody Google this shit. (laughs) So, yeah, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. um, Continue. Well, most of the people were actually in relationships uh, at the wedding. There wasn't too many, at least not to my knowledge, but I wasn't out there looking. Not too many uh, single people that I noticed. Um, But the hotel, how do I put it? I I had some issues with the hotel. Um, Uh I have. I kind of have issues with hotels in general. I tend to, like, I would say eight times out of ten, like, get a little sick at hotels, like, head cold type things. I think it's just, like... What's the fake air being blown in? The, the air, it's the foreign bed, the shower. Yeah. It's like you're, you're just, you're completely taken out of your element and dropped into filth. And besides, well, it's filth, but it's also, but it's, you know, it's almost too sterile as well. It's invisible filth yeah. is what it is. Yeah. You got to get, you know... And I'm not one that carries a black light. I just well, nor would you want to even put it on. Uh, just, it, I, I, I'm one of. It's like all bets are off once I mean, I'm checked you, in. I mean, you get freaked out in overnights watching scary movies. Right. Imagine the black light that you would. God forbid, I, I start in a black light and there's just <laughs> just stain upon yeah. stain. The entire place is just covered in white. But um, but I yeah, I tend to get not really sick, but just really stuffed up. Really, and mm-hmm. it's probably the air and all that stuff. But um. And that, of course, it happened. Um, but one of the other issues was um, the first night coming back from the Chinese restaurant, um, my key didn't work in the door. Oh, that was always fun. And uh, my girlfriend was smart enough, was being the responsible one, and she checked out early, and she was in bed sleeping. And the last thing I wanted to do was wake her up. Of course. So banging on the door wasn't an option at that point. Because I don't know what time it was, but I know it was too late to do that. Right. So I slide the key in, get the yellow light. Great. Try again. <laughs> not working. It's like it's like a fucking NASCAR experiment. That like sucks. yellow light. No, what not, happened to you're not keys? Going yet. Yeah. Just put a fucking key in the door well, and open the lock. Well, once again, a, a time when technology, when it's supposed to make your life easier, right. makes it a living hell. Right. So I go downstairs, back to the front desk, in a state that I should have been I should not have been talking to people in right and I I think I handled myself pretty damn well let's get the word short well that's not what, working that's what you think <laughs> not <working. laughs> no just held the key out not working me Mike went not working key. gave him the name gave Give him the room number one. he did a little swipe 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 sent me back on my way right go back upstairs yellow light fuck not working a couple more, same thing. Yellow lights not working. So I go back downstairs. This time on the desk, not working. Much angrier. 
Me, Mike, me, angry. <laughs> Seriously. Key not work. More. I'm going to drunk smash you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he calls over some guy. He called him a manager. He, I don't think he was a manager. He, I don't know if. He didn't smell like a manager. He, not to Mike. He looked, he, I mean, he looked like a customer, like, but could have been somebody going home, could right. maintenance, whatever. I don't believe it was a manager, especially by the way he reacted mm -hmm. because they do the swipe, swipe, swipe again, give me back the car. We go back upstairs. Now, mind you, we're also on the fifth fucking floor. Oh, so. Well, fifth uh, of five. <laughs> so we're on the top floor. So, well, at least, at least the alcohol is having its way to drain out of your body. I just want to be in bed. <laughs> just wanted to be in bed getting this night over with because I had to be in a wedding the next morning. <laughs> Not playing calisthenics <laughs> with this fucking guy. <laughs> so we go back up. He slides the key in. Yellow yeah. light. Look at him. Looks at me. Does the same thing I had done before. Slides the key back in. Yellow light. Hands me the key. Shrugs his shoulders. Walks the fuck away. What? I'm like, and that's why I don't believe he was a manager. Right. Because he, uh, he had to have been just some fucking maintenance guy who didn't know dick about dick. And they was just like, we'll give him a, we'll call this guy a manager and send him on his way. So I'm like, I'm like, hey. What am I supposed to do? Right, of course. He's like, is somebody in there? Bang on the door. <laughs> this is not how you solve a problem. No. That is, that's what I, that's what normal people would do. You're supposed to have an inside, like, where's the master key? What if there was a fucking fire or something? What if there was something wrong and somebody needed to open this door? What, and he just, and he just kept walking. Like he was, he was talking as he was backing away, walking down the hall towards the elevator. So I just, I had to get in, I had to get in bed. So I just did it. I fucking oh, banged man. on the door, and you know she opened up and wasn't happy. But I was like, look, key didn't work. I'm not doing this because I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, because <laughs> like, I, I wanted to get right out of the way. I'm like, look, it's not working. I, and I showed her. I showed her like it's not working. <laughs> I have gone through hellfire and brimstone to get here. This is the last resort. I explain the whole thing with the with the with the the quote unquote manager. And uh, but look, and I just went to bed. But the just, hell beast awakens. I, I would tell people just not. No, well, they just don't care. Well, they just you know. They don't provide a really good feeling most of the time. No. Oh, you, I mean, you're you're in and out the door. I've you're, had. Well, it's I a, mean, it's a it's, it's a business of revolving doors. It is. But you you know you don't have to be such a dick. No, it's you like could just be quasi dick. I was thinking about this, and there's literally been two times, and I count it one as as one and a half because the second one, only one person was nice. The rest of the hotel sucked. Right. Like up and down, just that's was usually, terrible. That's usually how I find it, but yeah. Um, but Disney. Oh, Disney, of course. Exceptional service. Mickey Mouse. Ex the people I for get, those you who know, don't know, Mike went cannot stop talking about Disney. It's the first time I brought it up. So yeah, far. well, in this in, in this on one. this podcast, but the last I don't know nine months of Facebook posts and Twitter I enjoy, posts have been I enjoy nothing it. but I Disney. It, it's to which I think he was the only person out there that uh, wanted to um, do the whole. Uh, or the only person that was saluting the Disney purchase of Star Wars. I think it's a great move. Yeah. I, I have I have reasons why, but I, I I absolutely believe it was a it was a great move. You gotta look at it this way: they can't be any worse than the three Lucas gave us, okay. the prequels. All right, all right, okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. That's fine. Right. But uh, but they, I mean their their service is is very exceptional. And that and then the other one was this one front desk woman at a at a Marriott in Montreal. Yep. But the hotel's absolutely blue. That hotel, it sucked. The room sucked. Everything was uncomfortable. They didn't have our room ready for three fucking hours. How do you do that? I have no idea. We showed up late, too. That was one of the times that... So you show up late, and they're still, they we were, still don't have you done for three we hours. We were expecting to show up at the hotel at one in the afternoon. Right. So much so that we called ahead and said, we're going to be there at one. Can we get an early check-in? Oh, no problem. Blah, 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 blah. Well, that just happened to be one of the times that we got the, the random anal probing at the border for two fucking hours. <laughs> oh, that is just the most ridiculously unnecessary fucking thing in the world. Wait, you got the anal probing? 
Yeah, yeah. You got I the, might might as well. I mean, they wasted oh, okay, enough time. Right. They might as well shove something well, in my I, ass and I, made it worth I, it. I just I just want to know because that's very interesting because I've never met anyone that actually got the anal program. No, I I I, I, I didn't actually get that far. Yeah. Uh, I think if I put up a little bit more of a stink, they would have been like, okay. They would have they would have put it up your uh, stink. Rub, rubber glove at time. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's sit them down or <laughs> bend them over, whichever. Did they, um, would they at least wind you and dine you first? But two and a half fucking hours yeah. sitting at the border. No, oh, that's awful. Just uh, just fucking and just being basically being called a liar at every turn, and I'm and you're just trying to give them straight answers just to get the fuck out of there, but they're just. Yeah. Again, another job of miserable fucking people. Of course. Border, border patrol people are just not happy. I would understand it a lot more if I was being a dick. Right. But I'm in a situation well, where I just want to be as sweet as pie and get across the border and go start drinking and going to strip clubs. That's all I want to do. <laughs> I just want to go have some fun, and I'm going to be as nice to you this as is, I can be. This is north of the border, right? Yes. Not south. Okay. Because yes. south of the border, they would handle it way differently. Yes. Yeah, I, you saw south of the border, you, you, you flash them a 20 in a pack of Marlboro Reds, and you're good, babe. <laughs> Whoa, American cigarettes. But, well, um. <laughs> I'm so glad you're not known for your impressions. Yes. That, that was, that, I don't know it's what a, the. It's okay. I just said the other day, give a man a microphone, he'll do a shitty impression. Absolutely. Well, we all got to do at least something. But, um. But yeah, it's just the. Un. The unnecessary aggravation when, you know, somebody, when, when the person on my side of the table is being, trying to be cooperative and the person on their side of the table is doing everything to make me not want to be cooperative. Absolutely. It's just like, I'm trying to move this along. You're the one stalling right, it. Right. You're the one making it completely difficult. You asked me a question. I gave you an answer. Yep. Now you're telling me that answer is wrong. Either prove it or shut the fuck up and let me go. Like the, I had, um, I had my my headphones for, for radio. Yeah, I had them in, in my car. They acted like it was a fucking bomb. They pull it out. Why do you have these? Why are you traveling with these? I go and I could have just been like, well, listen to fucking music, jerk off. Yeah. But I'm like, well, I work in radio and this these are that's you, part of my. You gave them it's the, in my, It was in my back seat. Because why? Because I bring them to work with me. Right, I take my car to work with but me. But you're being you're going out of your way to give them the actual explanation. You could you could have by all means just given them a crap explanation. I hey, could yeah, just be like, just yes, I enjoy music. ridiculously large headphones to listen to my iPod with. Yeah. But no, I I was like, I work in radio and I I keep them in the back seat of my right. car and this is da da da. But why are you traveling with them? And I'm like, what the fuck do you want me to say? I just, yeah, I mean, I just came from work, and I just figured because I'm gonna take these five year old headphones and try to hawk them for for fucking, I don't know, your your Canadian red dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I need a I need a Leblat right now. Seriously, stat. I I, I, I have no money, me? but I'm gonna pawn these bitches off. <laughs> and same thing, the guy I was traveling with had his work shit in the back seat, and he had like a laptop and an iPad and all that stuff, and uh, and he was actually on a business trip. So he wasn't. He doesn't live in Massachusetts. So he had all his shit because when we were coming home, we were gonna go straight to the airport. Right. Oh my God. Oh, they must have just red tagged him. We, we, oh, we we were definitely we were we were planning to invade Canada. We were gonna start a war with, <laughs> with that shit. You with, with a with a those <laughs> out there that want to know an iPad, an iPad, a laptop, a laptop and, and a headphones. Pair of headphones, and you can invade Canada. Absolutely. So ridiculous. Yet, I get it. You have to do some random selections. But they weren't, like, actually doing any of that. They weren't doing any research. Like, they weren't going through the car very well. Yeah. Like, I could have had a shitload of bad stuff hidden in that car. Mm -hmm. And all they were doing was going through our luggage. It's like, that's the last place I would hide paraphernalia as of if, any sort. Well, as if it's some sort of fetish for them. Right. It's like, oh, I wonder what this guy's wearing for underwear. But, um, yeah, just... I know it's it's pathetic, and I I don't. It's so uh, yeah. It's between between yeah. You're right. Hotels, uh, baggage. And it's the people you you're, you're trying claims. you're trying to be as calm and convenient with, just so you can get the fuck out of their face. Absolutely, because you don't want you don't want to be a big be burden here. on them. Right. You know, and you know that they're a burden on you, so I must be being a burden to them. And you you know. And you're trying to cooperate. I mean, it's the same thing with people in traffic. You know, you, hey, I'm gonna let you go right here. Okay, let let this person merge in. Oh, here comes the asshole that always follows like, like a millimeter behind the guy. Let me speed up and get right in there. It's like, dude, if if traffic, if you just went and you went, 
one car and then another and then the next lane right. and then one lane and the next lane. If you did it, it 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 would move sl- smoothly. But no one wants to believe that. And, no, because there's, there's always and this is at what least me... one dick that's going to ruin oh, yeah. it for everybody. And I had it today. I mean, it took me like a, a, an hour and twenty minutes to get in here. Right. It usually takes me forty minutes. How does that happen? <laughs> Ah, oh, fuck traffic. Anyway, yeah, See, that, yeah, that, that's that's a problem I've I've gotten rid of. You've yeah. gotten rid of it. I can't I I've can't afford to get rid of it. No, I'm I'm, I'm seven minutes door to door. I'm very happy with my traffic situation. <laughs> and then once I'm done with work, I go straight home and I don't leave the house oh. because I, it's amazing. Because if you know the hours we work, you know, in the late nights, the overnights, seeing a person's rare, especially on the road. Oh yeah. So when I have to go out during the day, like to run errands and stuff, it's like, uh, I'm like I don't, I don't like this. I no, there's, I there's way too many people to out deal there. With people and 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 cars, and I just, I, I want to go back to my couch. It's an inconvenience. I want to go you. back to my couch. You're being burdened by the I'm people. I'm safe there. <laughs> I'm not safe around you people. Right. They don't, they don't upset me when they're when I'm watching a movie. Right. Because I only see them for about an can, hour and a half. I can yell at them on Twitter if I want to <laughs> from the safety of my couch in my pajamas. Just like the rest of the internet. Right. <laughs> but uh yeah the uh just the inconveniences just man. the inconvenience it's, that's of all it all. is it's all the world their is questions are fucking retarded as well everyone's what? questions and are it's fucking like, retarded it would and again it would be one thing if they were trying to really dig into something why are you coming to canada You're right oh just a weekend away guys weekend you know whatever weekend away from the wives whatever you want to call it yeah to drink and be merry. Yeah, why can't you just say that? Well, you, we do. Oh, actually. Okay. I I tried. I thought uh, you were going to say that they won't. They won't let. No, no. You you can that. say it because I mean you're spending money in their country. But then they start questioning that. And this is an exact quote from that experience. You drove all the way from Boston to Montreal to have a drink with your friends. To this point, I feel like saying, and this is what you can't say because then you're going to be there for the rest of the fucking day. Right. But you feel like saying, don't fucking judge what I'm going to do. I've driven to Montreal for breakfast on a whim. That's the truth. That's pretty damn amazing. We were bowling one night in Cambridge, wrapped up around 1 o'clock in the morning. The three of us were standing there in the parking lot saying, what the fuck do you want to do right now? And I'm like, I could go for some breakfast at Expectations, which is located in downtown Montreal. We all looked at each other, did kind of the boop, boop, boop. Sounds like a hell of an idea. Let's load up. Got in the car, bombed right up there. That was the quickest we ever made it. Now, we I've, done, dr- I've done that going to New York, because as my buddy always says, New York's always open. <laughs> but uh, never Montreal. I mean, because there's too much to, to go into it. I mean, you got to... Make mm. sure you got your passports on. You make sure well, you this got. Was, this was year. This was oh, years okay, ago. Yeah. Before so the you pa- could just. Yeah, you could just a license bomb up there. and yeah. you're good. It was. It was back then when when things were safe and, and things, yeah, nobody worried. Thanks a lot, Bin Laden. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that was uh, we made it in record time. We were going about hundred, hundred and ten well, the whole way. At, the t- at that time too, not that many people were probably on the road either. No, absolutely not. You know? And we made it from from Cambridge to downtown Montreal in about three hours and forty five minutes. Wow. On average it takes us five hours and forty five minutes. And I mean by that time you're already sobered up, you're ready for breakfast and then you just go off for another drink. Yeah. Ex- exactly. We pulled in, got our breakfast, <laughs> got our drinks, got to spent the strip a little, club. spent a little time in in the city and went home. It was lovely. Had no problems that time. And look, and look at that. And you even spent money. And we and even were honest. We were honest at the border. The guy goes, and it was like, I don't know, like probably 3 o'clock in the morning at that point. What do you guys, what, what's bringing you to Canada? Yeah. And we're like, we want some breakfast. <laughs> and he, the only, I guarantee you, the only thing that could have been gone through his head is, it's too crazy to be made up. Yeah. <laughs> These three fucking idiots from Boston just want to go have some breakfast. Oh. Uh. Man, he just he's just thinking to himself, man, I should have done better in school. Why am I working border patrol? Why am I working the three AM shift you at know, the border? If I had just if I had just paid that much more attention in geology or geometry or phys ed <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be here talking Could to these numbskulls. Oh. These fucking American kids coming up here to to eat breakfast. What are you fucking nuts? <laughs> this is my eh? life. 
It's like this is yeah, this is my life. This is my not, life. Not enough. Not enough Molson could get him oh, through that day. Just, just, just go. I, I hate myself right now. <laughs> uh, you know what though? That's a that's a good. That is a good story to have. I mean, I'm sure everyone had, wishes they had a story like that. But again, why can't you just do that? Why Why do you have to have a reason? I mean, believe me, I understand it because going over to Ireland, mm. you know. They obviously they question you because they don't want, you know, just bums and hooligans coming in. So I was traveling with a buddy and he just said, just just tell him, you know, we're here for my sister's wedding. And, you know, I was I was I was his when plus did, when one did vacation, not be a valid traveling reason. I, well, you know, obviously, like I said, they don't want bums, you know, college kids. Mm. Oh, I got to get the, the great college escape. I'm just going to take a year <laughs> off and I'm going to go to Europe. Because that, that's what I was, I, that's what I wanted to do. Right. Uh, of course, because, you know, hey, I read Jack Kerouac for the first time and I said, hey, I got to travel around the country. Of course. And, you know, still, I, I still enjoy that, that sentiment. But, you know, that's what they're trying to avoid is like, I don't want my, these bum kids coming in here with a thousand dollars for three months which which was a uh, something my buddy did who bef- the first time he went to ireland <laughs> he likes to tell the story he gets to the he gets to the gate what are you doing here like where are you going oh well my you know my my buddy lives you know in, in dublin somewhere oh, they yeah? love that one oh, somewhere yeah, somewhere it's like oh, i know no. this guy oh, they, man they, they know him they know him. and his, his whole idea was you know i'm gonna go because he's uh you know he's a performer so he's gonna go he's gonna busk around he's gonna you know have sure, some fun sure and so the guy's like uh oh what you know where does he live uh you know he's 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 in um in in galway that's where it was galway where where exactly uh you well you know I don't, I don't know where but you everyone impression right now yeah okay everyone knows him over there and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, hey, how much money you got? And guy's like, oh, you know, I got, I got a thousand dollars. On how long are you staying? Three months. A thousand dollars for three months? <laughs> are you daft? They fucking shipped them, put them back on the plane and shipped them back home. Said, get out of here. Wow. I don't want that because you have to have, they want you to have an actual address. They do. They want sure, you to know sure. that you're not just going to be bumming around because they also want you spending money. If you only got a thousand dollars and you're just going to spend money on, on beer. Right, right. I mean, that's nothing. It'd be fine for a weekend. Exactly. Like a thousand dollars. Like you could blow a thousand dollars on a weekend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm sure you know that. But, um. I think that's part of it. Sure. I mean, obviously, the terror around the world is part of it. it. But it sucks. It sucks that you can't just go somewhere and and just have fun and then, you know, call it a day. Yeah, it's like the, 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 there should be, like, this, this application that you can, like, something you can apply for that basically it's like a stamp or a scan or something like that that you can go up to the border of any place and be like, it's it basically tells them he's not going to cause any problems. He all he's going to do is spend some money, have a good time, and come home. Yeah, you know. Yep. How how do I get that? <laughs> okay, I think that's the, really. I think that's the uh, the question of life. It's like it would be that's like a fast you... pass for the border. <laughs> Literally, like an easy pass for the border. I wish. Well, usually they call that cocaine, but yeah. <laughs> um, that's, yeah. that's when you just barrel through the gate. <laughs> well, exactly. You just you just stronghold like fucking adrenochrome, just going right through. Uh, <laughs> You'll never take me alive. <laughs> <laughs> Run with me through the hills. Uh, yeah, a fast pass for the border would be great. But again, then you wouldn't have that lovely time of of being checked by uh, right. every orifice uh, and and every orifice of your car. Right. So I mean, it's you know it's a little power thing, but if it keeps. Mike, if it keeps us safe, it keeps the kids safe. Fine, I'll yeah, sacrifice well, it keeps, my it keeps fun. the Canadians safe. It I never have a problem coming home because <laughs> they know. They I mean, know. They're, they're they're stern pricks coming home. But, but, what but are they, you doing? What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. But it's like in, out, done. Well, that's because they know your type of crazy. Roll the window down. Where are you oh, from, oh, Boston? Wait. What are you doing? <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> you bring anything back? Nope. Just a just a fine sense of your great country. <laughs> you know? All right. Take your... If I can, just say, you know, I mean, they might be angry people, but at least they're not going to fucking waste my time while I'm sitting there with a line of cars backed up. Right. It's it's more efficient coming home, which I don't know if that's a good thing because they're letting more people into our borders without checking. Well, I mean, but... Now, granted, I, I, I'm just... 
generalizing with sure, my own experiences. But I'm sure. But I'm sure it's with more of the when they stop the Americans, it's like, all right, get the hell out of here. Sure. Um, I'm sure they're. I'm I sh- would love to hear a story from a Canadian saying that they they go through the same bullshit. It would just make me feel a little bit better about my awful experiences at well, the border. Maybe one day we'll. I I will surprise you and we'll bring a Canadian on here. A real live Canadian. A real live with the flapping heads and everything. <laughs> Thanks, South Park. Uh, but I guess to bring it full circle, uh-uh. um, the two and a half hours we spent, we were obviously late getting to the hotel. Right, right. We were originally supposed to be there at one. We got there about oh, three thirty. Right, that's right. We were back on the wedding thing. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Well, this, yeah, yeah, back to the the hotel, <laughs> the the awful hotel that was. So we got there about three thirty, three forty-five. Yeah. And now regular check-in time is three o'clock at the hotel. Okay. We had an early check-in, so our room Which should have been like waiting. That's mm-hmm. like one o'clock or something. Yeah, early one o'clock. Check-in. We had yeah. called and been like, "We're gonna be here at one. Can we check in early? No problem. Okay, great. So our room should have been waiting for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. By the time uh, we got there, at them, quarter of four. You already gave it. Oh, so you got there at quarter of four, and it still wasn't ready. And it still wasn't ready. And regular check-in time is three o'clock. This this hotel is a terrible Bush establishment. Bush League, all right. Bush we League. We got a Motel Six. And the fucked up thing was actually, it was a Marriott mo- actually, residence. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, I made, yelped the shit out of them. <laughs> you know, I made the joke. I made a, the joke about you know what is this a Motel Six? But Motel Six, I mean, they clean that shit in and out because oh, they got, absolutely. They, they wipe the blood stains off the walls real quick. I got really, I got really disturbed. I, we had a, we had a friend of ours just walk by, and and flash his we uh, his man breasts. Um, it, the, it's our it's our good buddy Bird. Hi, Bird. Hi. Hi. Hi, Bird. Are you, How are you? Are you flashing your, your titties out there? Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. You want more fit and less slabby. He looks like you've been working out. Have you? <laughs> oh Doing a couple push ups. Nice. Nice. You just, well, it looks like you're pushing a clipboard these days. Oh, no. There was a meeting downstairs. Oh, oh. Guy. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just taking some notes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Scribbling. Draw, drawing dicks and boobs. It, it, I, I pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it looks Yoshi. like it looks like he's got a couple tic tac toe patterns in there and a couple dicks. Yeah. Keep losing tic tac toe to yourself, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> the left hand just keeps, keeps kicking just, your ass. Just, <laughs> just put the X in the center and uh, That's down. that's all right because the right hand knows how to work it. <laughs> <laughs> the right hand gets its own job done. <laughs> well, <laughs> enjoy the day. You too. Good seeing you, Bird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's all right. It's okay. It's all part of the experience. All right, that's fine. <laughs> See ya. Which one Poppins? And the door. Poppins. Poppins. I like Poppins. That's we like Poppins. Um, Mary Poppins. Well, was I? Uh, so we're... Blinking light. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay, so yeah, so they, uh, let me just wrap it up real fucking quick. So they were they didn't have the room ready, so they're like, oh, well... We'll take your bags, and this and this is where the the nice part came in because the woman was genuinely nice, and she was like genuinely giving everyone else shit on our behalf. And uh, so she took our bags. She's like, "Look, I'm gonna get them right on it. We'll clean it up." Blah 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 blah. So we're like, "All right, let us just you know we'll wash up in the in the bathroom. Go get some lunch." Right. So we wash up. We go get some lunch down the street. We come back. It's now probably. Closer to five. Yeah. And she calls and she's like, they're still not ready. I'm not fucking around. You guys still can't. weren't ready. At five? About a quarter of, yeah. Four thirty, five o'clock. And uh so she's like, But we we're gonna upgrade you. So they upgraded us to a, to another room, which wasn't any better. The room still sucked. <laughs> It's a man. Fucking so, the st- I, I I was on a shitty sofa bed because it was spent- only because they upgraded us to a one bed. There's uh, two guys. Come on, I ain't doing. I'm not rolling that way. There's nothing wrong with that, Mike. There is one sleeps on you top of the covers and one sleeps underneath. You the know covers. what? When when t- two two guys, two guys and a queen ain't bad. <laughs> but uh, but you know they had the sofa bed option, <laughs> and uh, of course it was it was about as comfortable as a sofa bed is ever to be expected. Just springs and metal rods in my back, and it was awesome. Yeah. yeah good times. That's, that's great. Oh, yeah, it was wonderful. But I did get to watch Jersey Shore in French. Wonderful. So, small victories for me. Yes, absolutely. Small victories. Because, you know, as we all know, they're highly intelligent intelligent, and can be it broadcast translates. It in does five translate. different languages. Yes. The uh, the French translation is... Uh, it holds It holds well. outside a fishbowl. Is there something going on? 
I don't know. You keep looking out there like there's a. Oh, I, I, cause I keep hearing doors closing. There's a and vagrant. I keep, I keep thinking vagrants are gonna be walking by. <laughs> you keep, well, you keep letting people in off the streets. I. Th there's a problem. I, well, there was flashing lights. Every going time on. somebody crashes their car, you gotta take them in like a goddamn stray puppy. <laughs> well, they just look so cute. Come in here, old man. I'll rub your head. I never. <laughs> oh my god, I never had a dog when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So you know, any any type of stray, whether it be dog, cat, or human, uh, you know, you gotta take care of them a little bit. Besides, you know, I'm just yeah. saving up for the day that I do something terrible. Oh, so you're you're hoping that someday when. It when just gets you, returned. You're shitting in your pants. You have somebody <laughs> like yourself that's like, oh, isn't that cute? I'll yeah, wipe his ass exactly. for him. Yeah, exactly. Great. That's what I need. Right. <laughs> I'm hopefully not going to be stumbling on Mike's doorstep anytime soon. Ah, would not be advised, sir. <laughs> would not be advised. <laughs> a shotgun pointed at my face. <laughs> There's some peanuts. Hope you got an allergy, kid. <laughs> Shh. Eat. Eat, eat the little death. Oh, <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. I just saw that on, uh, not just to keep going with the peanut allergies, um, I think it was last week's South Park. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. With butter, butters, butters with the, the peanut M&Ms. Butters in the peanut M&Ms, and he's like, what, what, do you, what do you have there? It's peanut M&M? Um, uh, oh, no, almond M&M. &M. Almonds, yep. And he goes... I'm I'm deathly allergic to almonds, and then he pops it like a cyanide yeah, capsule. That's exactly that's fantastic. That. that show, I give them so like I hold those two guys in so much higher regard than like even some of the best television. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just based on their the way they work, like oh. they they um the uh the six hours six, six days, days to, air. to the air. Yeah, yeah. the documentary. Uh, yep. The six days to air. Just fucking amazing how they turn around an episode. And it shows because almost every one of them is very pop culture oriented. And it's very, like, I mean, well, they had and Obama winning. Well, and it's the day yeah. after the election. And it's, and it's recent, too. But I wonder, like, Would some, they, they probably had a Romney one as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Or they had, like, certain scenes that they could throw in where it was like, you know, they, they probably had the storyline all set out with Cartman right. and everything. And it was just a matter of who was sitting down and who was doing this. And. Um, but still, it was I mean, almost e an interchangeable storyline. The, the, the amazement is that if that's how they did it and it was two episodes and they just chose which one that they were going to run animate with, two episodes, they still though. had to do two episodes. I, it's, it's insane and, the way I those mean, guys work. The way they described it, especially is like most, you know, most of the popular animated shows like Family Guy and that stuff, they ship their shit out to, uh, to like Japan or, or wherever and they get it turned around in maybe a year. Yeah. Which I was, uh, I was really surprised hearing that from... I don't know if it was Matt Groening or s someone else uh, speaking on behalf of The Simpsons, but mm. to hear that you know how long it takes for them to do a season, and then you see South Park, and they're and that's why their satire and everything else is and a it's step quality above everyone shit else. Too. And the, it's the quality is amazing, bitingly funny quality shit, and they they literally reanimate a new episode every fucking week. It's it's insane, and and the fact that they, I mean, the six days to air was basically around the uh, uh, opening of... Um, well, they were coming right off of it, uh, Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon. Um, the fact that they could just put that on hold to just go and, and just like, it was like, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, you think to yourself, man, it's Monday, I got to go back to work. Like, right. for them to go back to work is like to go and create South Park. And then they do it. They're busting out laughing. It looks like a fun environment to do it in, but I'm sure highly stressful. Oh, absolutely. And then they crank it out. And even... They weren't even very um, pleased with the show that they cranked out. It was, it was human the, uh, pad. Yeah, the, the centipad. But you watched that one, and that, that one's fucking hilarious. hilarious. It was great, and it was a great commentary on what was going on with, with Apple and, and human centipede and everything. Yep. But the the wit on those guys, it's the smartest show on television. Absolutely. Don't care what anyone says. Smartest show on television. And to think, I mean, even going back to like some of their older... I mean the the older South Parks and they they've even come out and said that they wish the first like two or three seasons didn't exist. Like they they're just not happy with them because you know they've gotten better oh, yes. every but year. Looking back on like some of their older movies like uh, Cannibal the Musical yep. or Og Orgasmo, and it's just like there was something that wasn't normal because especially like Cannibal they did that in college. Yeah, and that's still to this day a funny fucking movie. Well, but I think I think it just. Uh, I think it just speaks to their, I mean, their charm and their and their wit and their sense of humor that 
you know, it's one of those things it, you it, can't teach funny. No, exactly. You absolutely they just, can't they teach just funny. know it, and and I think it's just that a good majority of their viewers, but also um, a good majority of people of society just gets there. They they get society. They get society's right. humor. I mean, it's dick and fart jokes, but it's highly intelligent dick and fart jokes. You know, it also helps that they basically have pretty much free reign. Well, over uh, over content because well, I mean because for for Comedy Central I mean that that's a license to print money, but every season well, they renew for is just like absolutely. But if it but luckily someone at Comedy Central still working there realized that without South Park, right. Comedy Central wouldn't be where it is today. Absolutely, I not. mean when they when they did, I think it was ninety seven when they came mm -hmm. out it was on fire and it was the that was I the mean, only thing and it was yeah it was the only original programming I believe and then and then came. The Daily Show, but I think uh, Kilborn was Kilborn on had it. it first, yeah. And then Stewart comes on. So you had South Park and The Daily Show. Now that those are the front runners of that, of that entire. How I guarantee you, the first call they made after Chappelle bail was to Trey, Matt and Trey. Oh yeah, please bail please us out. Please resign. Please, please do anything, and that's probably we'll give what you his money. And honestly, that's probably we'll give you his fifty that's million. Probably, that's probably what happened is is they said please bail us out of this, and they said give us complete control, and oh, that's I'm, why they can do whatever the hell they I'm want. Sure, there was now. a lot a lot of negotiations done, and I mean they they even tried at Comedy Central for a bit. I mean they were trying to make Mencia the next Chappelle. I mean they they tried to replace oh, him. Mencia would have never happened. They, I mean, they tried can't... Mencia. They did um, the kid who looks like Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, oh, looks like oh, uh, um, are you talking? You know about, who I'm talking about? Skinny white kid. Yeah. I fucking Nick. Uh, of whatever the fuck is it? It was a terrible show. Dimitri Martin. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you talked about uh, Nick Swartzen. No, but he's done like three shows for him. Yeah, but they're all failed. But Demar uh, Dimitri Martin, they tried, and I mean his stand-up's funny, but it, it doesn't again, translate. To it doesn't the, translate to everything sketch. else, right? Yeah. Um. But yeah. Swartzen's one of those guys, though. He's he's the cat. He's one of the ones that I category in like the fourth or fifth guy in. Like he's really good as like the fourth or fifth lead, but he shouldn't be. No, he, he shouldn't be the big name on the poster. Absolutely. You know, he's one of the little names on the poster. Well, and that's to me. And you know, again, I know I'm in the minority, but um, I still feel that same way about a guy like uh, Steve Carell. I still yep. feel that way about Will Ferrell, to be honest. Um, mm. You know, to an extent, I feel that way about Ben Stiller, too. Uh, you know, if you have an ensemble cast, like, those guys are good guys to plug in. Like, Vince Vaughn can kind of, kind of... It depends on the work, a, though. Right. But, um, but like, Will Ferrell, I, I find much funnier if he's just an offshoot character that just happens to appear during the movie, you know? Or... Or he's, those, or he's playing second banana to everything, like old school, which was great. And the reason why it was great is because the main focus was on Luke Wilson. Yeah. And then you had Vince Vaughn as, you know, the, the I guess he would be. For lack of a better term, he was the heavy. Well, he was the heavy, but he was, you know, he, you had Luke Wilson as a straight man, the heavy. And then you had the. The goofball. The goofball, the yeah. contemplating, you know. Uh, um, you had your Mo, Larry, and Curly, basically. Yes. You had the three stooges there, and that was great. But that's what Farrell should be. And, uh, and, and I think because everything else he does is it's hilarious. Uh, TV spots he does. Hilarious. I think he's great in shit like that because he doesn't have the pressure of a whole movie on him. Yeah. Like if this thing fails, Will Ferrell bombs at the box office. Right. But if the, if it fails as an ensemble, it's just like it's, they'll just put the movie title up there. Right. You it's know, the, it's not it's not anyone else's fault. And um, a prime example, and I can't stand the fact that he keeps getting leading work is Jonah Hill. I don't. I'm. I just. I don't find him funny. Jonah, Jonah Hill is not funny. I don't. Uh, and I, and it's like I don't even. I. If I think really hard, maybe I can think of a, a movie where I found him funny as a supporting character. Super bad. I found him trying way too hard in it. I really did. See, I found the movie funny. See, the reason why I thought it was great was because. Um, you know who the funniest guys in that movie were? The guy's doing blow in that party scene. Oh, totally. The whole that party scene was That was the was best great. fucking scene of the entire movie. That that dude that was just all amped up and he's uh, just like... <sighs> uh, but he but he's been in so many other things. Uh, he played Eddie on something. Or, or, yeah. You know, he played... Uh, he, and he's a great kid. Those he was, guys um, stole the fucking movie was, from uh, me. He was um, Ray Liotta's brother in Goodfellas. That's what I'm talking about. He was one of them, yeah. yeah. The, the guy in the Brazilian that is... In, in the soccer shirt, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Um, but Jonah Hill in that movie... 
you know, I knew kids like that in high school. Well, and everybody that's why, did. And, and that's why I thought that that movie was great was because, you know, finally, again, like, you know, American Pie did it somewhat, but it was still a little more scripted. But that, that whole movie, the dialogue and everything in it was basically how you spoke in, in high school, how, sure. how you relate to your friends. So that's why I was like, this is really funny. Finally, someone was able to capture that mm-hmm. on the screen. I thought, after, the, I thought after, the source material was very good. Right, but after but after a hundred viewings of it, right on FX and whatever, and especially it, because it gets old. It was one of those. It was another one of those movies, and I know it falls into the whole the Seth Rogen Judd Apatow. Yep. Every time they put something out, it's the funniest movie ever made right. in the history of comedy, and it's just like no, it really isn't. Okay, Bachelor Party is. <laughs> Bachelor Let's call it spade a spade here. <laughs> Bachelor Party, top three comedies of all time. <laughs> I uh, dare you to sit through Bachelor Party and then say this isn't the greatest comedy of all time. Top three comedies, and I can already list off: Young Frankenstein. That's a good one. Caddyshack. Yep. Ghostbusters. Um, Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's already four there. So for me, mm-hmm. well, it doesn't. I'm not arguing. It Bachelor Party doesn't fit in there. I'm not arguing. I would put, I would party, put Bachelor Party Bachelor in that party, same category. Bachelor though. Party was very funny, and uh, and probably the only good thing that uh, is it Adrian Zamed. Sure. That's probably the only good thing he ever did. Besides, I mean, have you watched T.J. No, Hooker I'm not in high watch, definition? I'm not going to watch T.J. Hooker in high. <laughs> One of the Fuck first you. channels I actually when I when I hooked up my new TV and put it up on the wall, it was beautiful. It was shiny. And it just happened to be on that Universal yes. HD ne- network, yeah. and T.J. Hooker was on. Doesn't matter. Looks beautiful. Oh, it doesn't matter. The man's hair is impeccable. No, shut up. <laughs> Sh- HD can't even help Shatner. Stop it. Stop it. You have n- you have not known glory Heather, Heather until Locklear. you've seen Shatner slide on a hood in HD. <laughs> Heather Locklear in that boof that she's got, and Adrian Zemed in that crooked <laughs> smile he's got. No, no. HD cannot help that, have you that seen show Grease at all. Two? Stop it, Grease 2. <laughs> I have seen Grease 2 and have lived to tell about it. I've lived to tell about it. <laughs> I don't I know why I watched too. All it. I got was this shitty T-shirt. <laughs> All I got was this shitty feeling of remorse. Uh, but um, we were speaking of TV, and I know you you brought something up because I had posted something on Facebook the other yes. day. Yes. Uh, that I said that Wilfred. Mm-hmm. What was the exact quote? Wilfred is a Wilfred perfect is show. Is a perfect show. And now I'm only now. Let me let me just start by saying. I, I I do a lot of catching up on on later on after sure. shows. So I have only watched the first season of okay. Wilfred. I have not gotten to the second season, and I've heard there's a difference in it. There is. However, the a lot of the reviews say it's just more cerebral, which actually makes it funnier. Sure. Um, but from what I have seen, the sample I've seen, I've never laughed so hard okay. at a television show, and felt so inappropriate about laughing about it. For some strange reason, I don't know, but it was like, like I shouldn't be laughing at this, but it's really funny. Now I wasn't completely arguing. All I now uh, yeah, when I responded yeah. to it, I said was that was a bold statement because I I was looking for basically your definition of what makes a perfect show. I think I think superior acting. I think a great premise. Uh, I, I think yeah, for me a show, um, you know, I I enjoy you know you dramatic shows your boardwalk empires which is is my favorite right now but um you know i i still have to get into the wire yeah again i'm very i was a big heroes person and i didn't I know pick up the wire until the last season and so right. I'm, but I'm think, right there with you but i think uh you know i like the more serious shows however a good for me a good show a perfect show is is a nice blend of like a little bit of serious a little bit of comedy right but when you can get that awkward humor mm-hmm. down at the same time, it's just a perfect blend, and I think everyone in that show, especially Elijah Elijah Wood, is fantastic in that He's show. He's come a long way ever since. Uh, what was it, Huck Finn? I yeah. think that's when I saw him yeah. first. I mean, I was and even going to say son. because I, being not being a Lord of the Rings fan, yeah, that's what I see him as, and I'm like fucking Frodo. That's that's well, that's. that's but like I said, he's come a long way, and and he's he's picked the right projects. To show his range, so right. he's not well, just this Hobbit, right? He and he's also not Michael Sarah, yeah. you know. He's but he's a serious actor. The man is is a it, and you know even I'll even give it up to um you know to to stay on the Hobbit road to uh uh Sean Ashton. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me he was first off he was Encino Man, 
Goonies. Oh, well, see, I had, when I was a kid, I'd seen Encino Man first. Okay. So it was Encino Man, then the Goonies, and then... Um, Encino Man. <laughs> and then... Uh, and, Man. But he will always, great. he will always, always be Rudy. Mm-hmm. And no matter what. So, like, for me, watching The Lord of the Rings, it was like, hey, Rudy's a hobbit. And well, Rudy was, was a, Rudy's one of those institution movies that it's like yeah. every kid has seen it because I think that would for at least for me in school that was one of those rainy day movies oh, where it's yeah. like the teachers would bring it in for movie well, day that and Forrest Gump because which, it was very safe right well that and it was Forrest even safer Gump, than which, Gump because well, it's absolutely I mean, safer it was, than Gump you know there was a little get her bit a of, harmonica there's there a little bit of in there but at least Forrest Gump had the historical right. quote unquote value to it uh, again both of those movies are the are two of I think only a handful of movies that I'll still tear up at I mean Rudy Come on, when he when when they're out there on the field and he gets that final sack, which by the way was true, it was true part of the story. Sure. Um, and then you know never for, met the man, but I'll take for, word on for, it. And then uh, Forrest Gump, uh, the and he's so smart, Jenny. He's so smart. It's just you know, it's just it's just painful. Anyway, back to Wilfred. You credit uh, Gump, huh? <laughs> I cried just at that part. I teared up a little bit. You know, come on. The love, the lovable, mentally handicapped man overcoming everything and becoming a billionaire. I mean, it's the story of, of Bill Gates. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I have to Google his handicap. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but Wilfred, yes. I just I just find it to be a perfect show. I, I laugh. I, I was laughing uncontrollably at it. I, didn't, I wasn't bored with any of the episodes. Some of the episodes are slow. Yeah. Um, but See, I thought the, the first episode, one of the one of the funniest shows I had seen was the very first episode. Yeah. And I think the drop off for me was they really hammered home the dog shit in the first one, like chasing the mailman and that stuff. Oh, but they still did more of it. They, they did it, but it's like the first episode. I was laughing my balls off because that was a lot of what they were doing right like uh here he hears a noise outside and starts yelling but he's yelling his own thoughts it's right. not a dog right. barking a anymore dog barking. he's like i hear you and i'm gonna kill you i'm a big dog in here you know <laughs> trying to be threatening no and that was great but you also have you know there was uh, later on in the season you had uh he's lying on the ground sleeping and he's like as a, mm. as a human being sure, sure. In, a, in a dog suit kicking and stuff he's doing the whole thing he's uh um the laser pointer where, <laughs> hey let me let me watch yeah. this and he's like you i you know this is this is unbelievable like i are you guys seeing this and you know he's trying to grab the thing right uh the the ball thing where the kid comes sure. up wilford you want to play i mean they still and i think well from what i've heard from other people is they still elaborate on that a little bit more in the second season but um other than that i mean and like for the life of me i was trying to remember his name, the actor's name that plays Wilfred, uh, and he's just is it Jesse Jess, Gann or Gunn or something? Yeah, like that? Some, something to that extent. Yeah, I know there's a G and two N's. I don't know if there's a U or an A. Yeah, it's, it's either a, Gann or, or e Gunn again or what? But I mean, I know he, uh, and I still have yet to see the Australian version because I watched a couple episodes. And it, I, it was marketably different. Yes, I, of of course, but um, you know, and. Not to sound too hipster esque, but sure. you know the the original Office I thought was much funnier than this version of the well, Office. I mean, if if you don't like the original Office, I mean, you can just leave right now. Right. I mean, Planets. Ricky Gervais <laughs> is the boss. Right. Like, and and he's the boss that you hate. Like Steve Carell again, being a leading man type deal. Everyone else on that show is funnier than him. It's one of and, those things that it's like, yeah, everybody else is funnier and. You almost get the feeling that I I know that the and it's tough because the character was was supposed to be trying too hard to overcompensate to try to be funny right but it, you almost felt like the actor was also trying too hard to be a character trying too hard and it's just right. like at at certain points you're just like enough but but whereas Gervais would just make it fucking awkward and let it sit there right but but that's but that's the point that that was the point of the original show was that it was the awkwardness it was the fact that you just hate this guy because you hate this guy because right. his personality sucks Steve Carell was like it was more of a the lovable loser type thing you know you also like, had twelve episodes the first one you've well, had twelve years I know. Of this and, well, one. and that's 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 Amer that's like, American television. When are they going to send them into space? Right. When are they going to invent time traveling? When is he jumping the shark? Literally. Uh, <laughs> but you know, going back to Wilfred, like mm -hmm. I, 
I, I don't know. Something about it just strikes a chord with me. And for me, I think it's a perfect show. It's just fantastic. It's it's just that little bit of psychology, little sure. bit of everything in there, and just all thrown up, mashed together, and Elijah Wood's Elijah He's Wood's come amazing. A long way. I give him a and, lot you know, of credit. And again, again, not to harp on this show so much, but you know the guest appearances in there. I mean, Ed yeah. Helms. You go back to the office. Yeah. Ed Helms in there as the uh, as the vet who with the peanut mm-hmm. butter. Uh, Ethan Suppley is in there, yep. who I love Ethan Suppley ever since sure. Boy Meets World and uh, ever since the, the sailboat and ever since the sailboat Mall Rats, um, but they just got some really great co-stars and or I should say just uh, you know guest one-off stars. appearance guest, guest stars, stars yeah. and uh, perfect show, just all around perfect show. I'm not gonna argue. I, I know you're not gonna yeah, argue. Yeah, I, I, I was just—I I, I was very curious. I knew as soon as I knew I, as, I, I as soon as I put that up there, I went. Went is gonna fucking say something about this. How I know long? he is because he's just—he's just so particular with things. I, and I, he's yeah. the only person that I argue television with. <laughs> I don't. I besides mean, my girlfriend. I, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't think I would call it a perfect show. Um, I like it. I still watch it. Yeah. I, I, it's still in my DVR. You know, yeah. the series recorder. Um. I just I don't know I I feel that there's there's parts there's some episodes that are that I'm like uh eh. like I I've got I get that way about some show Bo- yeah. you mentioned Boardwalk Empire is another one that especially the first the first season took a lot for me to get through oh, it was, it's I uh, and believe the first me. season it was like I almost just said fuck it I'm, it's such a slow I'm not burn dedicating yeah. myself because I, you know you know that. That's a show that they're going to put enough money and enough fucking marketing behind that it's going to last plus five the, seasons. Plus the fact that it's got Scorsese's name on it. It's Scorsese, got Wahlberg's Sopranos, name on it. Wahlberg. I yeah. mean, the whole it's f- Buscemi. It's everyone in the there. The whole deal. And, they, and, and halfway through a season, they're picking up for another season. So it's like, okay. You knew it was going to yeah. be one of those shows that was going to be around for a while. And I was like, I'm sitting there like three or four episodes in. Like, do I really? Because I'm, I'm like that. I, I sat through every episode of Nip Tuck. Despite the fact I hated the last four seasons, really. I, well, I, just, I mean, but you the know, first two were good. I, wait, I don't, I don't know how many fucking. I think there was like six seasons of Nip Tuck. Yeah, it sounds about right. It sounds about right. But nevertheless, the, the the back half of it, I just, I get to that point where I have to see how it ends. Well, of course, but it's 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 also that point where you've invested so much time, right? And you're also hoping that, okay, it's it's like that. All right, well, that wasn't really a good episode, but maybe this episode has it. Or, sure. Ah, that, that wasn't in it, but maybe it's this episode that they turn it around again, and they don't. No, and, and I thought I felt the first season had about three or four in the middle yeah. that were just like, these aren't great, man. Like, these are not strong episodes. Like, these aren't... These, and, and, and like I said, I, I watch a lot more TV than the average person. I understand that. So it's very easy to hook me in right because i have the time i watch a lot of tv i do it <laughs> yeah, i'm no. being quite honest i, I, know. I, I, I watch know nights worth of tv and so i'm i'm very easy what i'm thinking about is i'm putting myself in you know the average television viewers right. eyes those three to four episodes would have had me turn it off if i was the average tv viewer those middle episodes I, I would have been like I'm I'm not investing in this right. I'm I'm done. Well, um, I mean, but yeah, but that's again, that's I think that's the plight of trying to hold, you know, an audience's. Well, that, that's an the audience's, challenge for everybody. I guess yeah. it's making television or any any entertainment I mean, I mean, for that look matter. At, look at look at all these shows that uh, that ended so prematurely. I mean, there was a there was a show again. Thank God for Netflix, because they just watch shows that yeah you you would have never heard of before. There was a show on I think it was NBC. Uh, the Black Donleys. Yeah, I still have. I got it in my queue. I, have, which, I still haven't watched it. Yet. Which I thought was just so fantastic. And uh, the kid that played um, the lead, basically the lead in uh, the Sandlot. Okay. Um, he is grown up, and he plays one of the. He plays the tougher douchebag of the brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just thought the whole the whole show. I mean, again, a slow burn show, but and you kind of see where it's gonna go. Sure. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're at the 13th episode, and then you realize they never picked it up for another season. Right. Because, again, ratings are such a huge deal to Especially them. Especially when it's, when it's network. Right. Networks are very, I mean... I mean, it's like, it's it's the quintessential, what have you done for me lately? Right. Uh, thing, and then they'll which try, I, they'll which try I shifting nights and this yeah, and that, and, and I mean... 
and I understand, I understand it, but at the same time, it's like you got to give some things, you know, a little bit of a you little bit. You know which one? I, I actually, I, I just, uh, I'm almost done. I got like three more episodes before I finish the entire series. The job. Oh yeah. Which was basically which, and I described it uh, That's on another Twitter. One. That's another one I got to check out. I described it as uh, a show way ahead of its time. Yeah. And when its time came around, we called it Rescue Me. Right. It was right. Dennis Leary. It's same same fucking crew. Dennis Leary and Peter Tolan created it. Mm -hmm. uh, Lenny Clark, Adam Ferrara. Oh, so everyone that's in the Rescue uh, Me. The, the, the chick whose name escapes me, yeah. but she was in a few seasons of Rescue Me. Yep. Um, and you see people uh, like his, his cousin who's dead in Rescue Me. Yeah, yeah. He's got like a two-episode arc in it. And it's just you see a lot of Rescue Me in it. And because huh. it's you know obviously written the same. They're New York cops as opposed to firefighters. So, and it was an ABC show. And it was so. It's it's so. Basically, what you're saying is, you know, shop around to everything that's not the network. I mean, because it looks like because it really know how looks FX like FX isn't everybody's first choice. It really looks like FX is the saving grace to, to a lot of things. I mean, to and an was, extent, uh, to an extent, the, Comedy Central is as well. But sure, you know, you have your it's always Sunnies and your Archers and your uh, uh, great show and and your Rescue Me's and whatnot and. They're they're making FX just just being just being the place to be where they're now pulling down. I mean, it's a little absurd, but they're now pulling down a uh, uh, How I Met Your Mother and a uh, you know. Of course, they got you know, they, the they, they're putting they're putting those into syndication. Sure. And it's like you guys should just keep pumping out original stuff. Oh, I'm sure they are, but they got to fill up the afternoon slots too. Well, yeah, you but know, you I fill mean, those up with the two and a half men. But the stuff two, that, but, but the, stuff the, two that the house half, moms are gonna watch. Right, but the two and a half men's are just you know there's I I can't believe how many different uh, stations have just owned yeah. that show. Yeah. And well, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just shopped around. Every, it's, it's, it's kind the, of a Seinfeld type of thing. And that's what I was gonna say. It's the Seinfeld of this generation. Right. It's not as funny, but it's it's just become as far as syndication, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's right up there with Friends. You know. Oh, but absolutely. But, but I I feel that but FX is just ruling everything yeah. on on just uh, original program. It's fantastic. And I think I I know I, I saw uh, I've seen interviews with Louis. Um, oh, that's another one. Too. That he based because I mean, he got a pretty raw deal from HBO. Oh yeah. Because Lucky Louis was it was a great I thought it was a great show. Mm -hmm. Critics loved it. Fans loved it. And I think it was just the way he described it. HBO just didn't get it, and they didn't like the the sitcommy type the way he was shooting the show so of course they canceled it they didn't pick up for a second season yeah and the the way he described the relationship with fx is they basically are giving he has as close to 100 percent creative control as you can possibly well, get on a television he show much does have creative i mean he does have full control because i believe well, he, he's editing he's directing yeah. he's starring he's doing all that and it's I guess I guess whoever the network head is yeah. at FX is very for lack of a better term, very cool. Yeah. yeah He's I a get very it, understanding obviously. and the same thing with uh I've seen Kurt Sutter praise him about um Sons of Anarchy. Yep. Say, and Jesus, the shit that they're getting away with this season. Well, and that's I, another I, and show I know that he, I haven't gotten into, but yeah. And I and I my my brother's <clears throat> the same way. He's he just watch the first couple episodes mm -hmm. of this season because he's the same way he'll dvr the entire season and then do a marathon in a week I, it's better yeah but um but just as as far as content and and just it's a like this see like they, that's another one that just keeps seems to get better every season and it's the that is that's playing off intensity and drama and right. pulling at your heartstrings type but, of but i think but i think thing. that's also just understanding the the way that the viewer themselves is going to view things and the fact that you have to you have to let things just push that envelope a little bit more to make it better you know what i mean you got it you got to it's killing it's killing the networks well because, the because networks, they can't do because it because they can't do it and that was part of the thing with with, with rescue me i mean uh, not rescue me uh, the job yeah was i mean it was an abc show and it was i mean the language was Kinda. Not completely FX, but it was. I mean, long, long gone are the days of uh, NYPD Blue and the. Well, that, that's the just shit it. It had just come the, off the heels of that, actually. And the, uh, what was the other one there? Um, wasn't it Dennis Franz or whatever showing his ass? Franz, on TV? yeah, yeah, his big fat ass up on the. I mean, 
It's like, oh, we're going to show bare ass on well, that, television. That was uh, the South Park Frost. bit with, yeah. uh, with uh, the fucking cr- crime drama. They're yeah. going to say shit on crime drama. Yeah. And then they're going to say shit twice on crime drama. But that, but that's, but that, was, but that was, but that was, but that was for real on uh, NYP Blue, I believe. I believe that was the big deal was they, were, they, were they really gonna, yeah. said shit and yeah. like the whole thing was shit happens. Yeah. Which was stupid. It was. But it's great marketing ploy. Because you you never thought you'd hear that stuff, but again, it's just the old the old guard not realizing that times are changing. And it's amazing how they they keep. It's like you, it's a generational thing because yeah. like then you felt like okay they're loosening up you know they're they're mm-hmm. loosening up the reins a little bit. They're gonna let them be a little edgy a little bit later in the night. They're gonna give us this. They're gonna give you know this group that and you know. If you want to see edgy, they're going to give you that option. If you want to see, you know, safe and clean, they're going to give you that option. Yeah. But then it's like, of course, you know, we all we all saw Janet Jackson's tit, and all of a sudden, fucking the apocalypse happens, yeah, and thanks. we can't thanks you lot, can't Janet. say boo on network TV anymore. Which I mean, for networks like FX and Comedy Central, it was a fucking gold mine. Well, yeah, and they and they are reaping the benefits really of everything, which is again great for them. But it's you know until the networks start realizing that. Those four or five people, which somehow translate to four or five million people, yeah. uh, un- until they realize that those people can, you know, just just turn it off then. Right. Because the rest of the world doesn't care. You, you don't know. have to fire people just because right. somebody gets annoyed with and, your show. And that's and that's the issue is that they just take too much issue with you know one person or two people because again. Five people complain. That means five million people. Yeah, every email is ten thousand people. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know, it's come on. It's it, it, it doesn't translate to the uh, the STD boaster that you saw. You know, right. if you sleep with this person, you sleep with everyone else. It's like no, if if one person complains, that one person complains. Right. That's it. But if you just sweep it under the uh, under the rug like nothing happened, like like that's that's status quo. Yeah. People aren't gonna you know worry about it. I would just love, let it go. I would love it. I would love to see some kind of network or or corporate figure if you will turn it back on them well they're gonna you know, s- they're gonna certainly need it turn, turn it back on whatever you know special interest groups or whatever it's like you know what i understand you don't like this but we're not going to apologize for doing this right. like i understand certain things are legitimately offensive i understand that Yep. And I understand there are certain things you legitimately cannot do without certain repercussions. I understand right and wrong. Absolutely. But, I, well, we but hope there so. are a lot of things that are people's personal opinions yep. that are like, that it's just a personal taste. It's a, it's a personal taste issue. It's not about right and wrong anymore. It's what you're basically now programming to one person. Right, and that one person is projecting their views on everyone else because I'm doing this for you. Right. And it's now, like, you don't know my life and, and what it's, I it's need. It's funny, though, because with the instant reaction now with, with the internet and everything, it's like, it's amazing how quickly, because it's almost, you almost think that the networks know they're going to get shit, mm-hmm. how quickly they turn around an apology. Oh, my God. It's like, Three tweets haven't even been sent yet, but they already got their apology pushed out to TMZ. Oh, well, because it's because it's as if it's as if you know before it happens, they've already had the they, they have apologies written up, right? And it's just that they you know they have blank spots for whatever it is, and they just fill in the blank here and fill in the blank here and show sign name it, yeah, here and sign it, and then boom, it's already out. Right. It's you know TMZ's got it up in four seconds. <laughs> it's absurd. It is, but politics. What are you gonna do? Nothing. What are you going to do? Complain about it. Get a podcast and complain about it. That's right. The internet. Last free bastion of uh, <laughs> free bastion of freedom. Well, I, I think the fact that I'm, I'm using that as terminology means is we're coming to the fucking end here. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's about that time. It is about that time. The free bastion of freedom has now come to an end. Let freedom ring. <laughs> I'm, I'm walking away from the table on that one. You're done? Yeah. Well, all right. And thank you for listening to another episode episode two episode two in the books the phantom minute no sorry 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 disney the the attack of the clones sorry disney we're not doing the attack of the, no yes. the attack of the mustache the attack of the, there we go yes episode i don't two. want to get sued <laughs> the the return of the mustache <laughs> <laughs> uh but thank you for listening thank you uh, we will see you uh, back here next week mike went billy finnegan see you next week bye-bye